Tap in, kid. Welcome to the Very Bad Magic Explosion Network's after show, breaking down, discussing, and reviewing each and every episode of the Disney Plus original Star Wars series, Star Wars The Bad Batch. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me, Ashley Hobley. Dylan, I'm excited to be here to talk about Plan 99 and stuff. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what are you about to say? Uh, this week... Uh, we are talking about the two-part season finale, episode 15, The Summit, episode 16, Plan 99. <clears throat> they were directed by Brad Rao, Nate Villa, Villeneuve, and Stuart Lee, written by Jennifer Corbett and Nat Nishofnitz. Uh, so, pretty, I don't know. I'll, I'll go out there straight. I'll get my thoughts out of the way this way. It's crazy how, for such a mixed season, they really, uh, they stuck the land in at least. <laughs> is how I would sum <laughs> up the, you know, that's how I would give my my short on this. Yep. But how do, how do you feel about the this two parter? Yeah, I think you're right. They 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 stuck the landing. Definitely setting it up for a season three. Um, yeah, it was really good. You know, uh, hit the emotional moments. It was a cool action, surprising cameo. Um, there's some shit that we I don't think I've ever seen in Star Wars before. That was pretty cool, like with the rail car and stuff. Um, yeah, it was it was really good. Mm. There was yeah, the I, I, there was the betrayal that we all saw coming. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, let's see it. I'll get this motherfucker. Um, yeah, it was re- real. I thought it was really really good. It was just like watching the episodes back to back. Of course, like most people would. I don't know why you'd watch them over break. But yeah, watching them back to back, it was just like a really good, what, 50 minutes, 45, 50 minutes mm. animated thing to watch. Really high quality uh, action scene with that rail car thing. I, that was like really quite well paced, thrilling, you know, yeah. sort of stuff that you, I don't know. I don't think I've seen the animated stuff get quite as good as that before. I felt like that was really, really well done. Uh, the emotional highs and lows, I guess, were here, of course. And, yeah, the the way they moved everyone around and the position that all the characters were left in at the end of the season was very much a Empire Strikes Back moment of they lost, you know, what, what, what happens next sort of feeling to it all, which was quite interesting for a show that for the 14 episodes prior for the most part had felt like it was just you know happy to chill along have a fun time random stories for no reason not not much happening um you know we, we've had such an up down experience with this season complaining about episodes you know obviously episodes been like that was good that was okay that was boring that was terrible like it's just been so up down up down and then for the, the 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 season finale to to be such a more adult episode and by that i just mean thematically uh, yeah, it was quite quite a wild ride, I thought so. Let's start with Tech dies. Is he dead forever? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm only putting I mean, it out it, there. They could be playing <laughs> with you know. There is a slim, slim chance because obviously we didn't see a body, uh, and you know the Doctor dude could be fucked with us. He could have him yeah. in his facility, um, in some tank, back to tank, uh. But yeah, probably likely he's dead. <laughs> yeah, I would say hopefully he's dead. I think bringing him back would be, I don't know. Star Wars has a thing for bringing back beloved characters and just. But with, we've seen a lot, clo- lot of clones die this week, this, yeah. this season. So, I, I hope he definitely stays dead. As weird as that sounds, <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, at the same time, if they were like, "Look, he died on this planet where the dude's doing fucked up experiments on clones," explanation, reason, thing that he manages to keep him alive, I'd be like. Yeah, happenstance. But yeah, all right, I I can buy it, I guess. Like, I don't know. Sure. Uh, yeah, I definitely feel like, yeah, that that whole... The, the, the leaving of the episode, tech, and coming into this, I'm like, I wonder if they'll actually, like, kill someone. Like, we'll start... Because I'm, yeah. I'm still of the mind of this show surely only has, like, three or four seasons. I just don't feel like it has that... Like, I, I just can't imagine it being that long for yeah. the show. So maybe another season or two. But mm-hmm. yeah, so coming into the finale, I'm like, are we going to start killing off anyone? Like, is someone actually going to die this season? Or like, what what are we doing in this in this finale? Yep. And then as soon as he had that moment with fucking character I can't remember the name of on the planet before they leave, like, yeah, 
has the, to be tight. The, <laughs> it's like we're coming back, you know, classic. Yeah, she's like, "When are you gonna say goodbye?" Nah, <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> nah. I wasn't okay. Well, I'm flirting with you. <laughs> it's, it's, nah, just heading off to do do my job. Yeah, so that was sort of a, a red herring there, but uh. Was they it a red herring t- or just a pre precursor? No, it was a, sorry, it was a yeah, it's all precursor. giant red. It was red flag. Sorry. Yeah, they they, they sneak into this base. Obviously, you get this whole cool scene where you have everyone sitting around the table talking and stuff, and we get a um, uh, they have a Kran- they have Krennic in there as well. Mm. One line he says says it was voiced by Ben Mendelsohn. Pretty sure they just ripped audio from Rogue One, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, which is fine. You know, I mean, he probably about- got paid for the audio, then. He- <laughs> yeah, probably. Tell us about Project Starlight. Um, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Fucking shit's coming together, Tarkin. Don't you worry. Old mate, Dr. Frankenstein lays out his whole plan, though, which is pretty much insert we're gonna make we're gonna spend this show plus half of the mandalorian to make the plot of the rise of skywalker make sense uh (laughs) like it's it's such the the (laughs) long-winded way to get there to to, for that movie making a little bit more sense yeah because to skip ahead a little bit but then we'll rewind but at the end nala nala see nala say however you say the uh cameron nolan's name she says straight up hey what the Emperor wants isn't possible. And the reason Omega's brought there is so she'll start working. So, but she's saying it's not possible. We know it's possible because what the Emperor wants is the ability for him to be brought back to life, basically. He, yeah, he wants to be cloned, but he wants to be able to be cloned and like his mind or whatever, like transfer. Yeah. Like the, he wants to live forever. He wants that typical he wants transference. ultra evil villain power of immortality is what he, yeah. is he wants. It's like the, is that, is, is the thing. And they're including this through line with clones in this. And then when you think about the fact that years and years and years later, we've now got this other character, another doctor experimenting with cloning tech, being a, a being in the Mandalorian, and he's trying to potentially, probably the main reason he wanted Grogu is to get the, the... Well, he needs like midi, midi-calorians, midi-calorians and stuff. To, and stuff. Like he needs Love a... Yeah, love that word. But I mean, the thing is, people hate it, but it's canon. It's and <laughs> it doesn't really make sense if they make a clone body and then be like, "Oh, how do you get the midichlorians?" Like, the, you've introduced this thing now. You've got to try to explain how that. How do you get that? And yeah, like it's one thing to create human tissue or like t- tissue, like what whatever you want to call it, like f- form of matter. But how do you create create it with a midichlorian count? Is I yeah. think the problem that when you start thinking about the cloning problem in Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker with Palpatine, this is the the issue you run into. So now we have two shows that are like, we're gonna fucking solve this. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna like, <laughs> hint that they've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, we're gonna introduce it as a factor prior to the the original trilogy, and we're gonna have a storyline coloring uh, carrying through to post Episode Six. So. Both sides were telling this whole cloning story. Sometime so. in 60, 70 years. Yeah. They've solved it. They finally solved it. Take, science is hard, you know what I mean? So. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so we get the whole scene where they sneak in. Obviously, they come across Saw Gerrera. A little fun cameo yeah. there. Saw Gerrera fucking Guerrera. everything up for our bad bad. It's typical, though. Saw loves to just feel like everywhere that anyone wants to be, he want, loves to be there ready to blow that shit up. Bloody extremist, am I right? Sorgara also loves to just show up in every Star Wars show, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. What, we see him episode two, right? Of the six of the show? Yep. Fighting off against Crosshair? Yeah. He's in this show. He's twice. He's in Rebels. He's in The Clone Wars. He's in uh, Rogue One the movie. He's Andor. in Andor. He's in... Maybe that's it. Pretty sure it was in Kenobi. Yeah, I think I saw him. He was in Kenobi. <laughs> Actually, he couldn't have been right. <laughs> no, he's dead. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's in a lot. So I'm yeah, pretty sure he'll show up in the High Republic somehow. 
the Alkalite, definitely soccer or shot. What if you like time travels, like just a few hundred years magically? There was a time when that happened. Wait until Ahsoka shows up in Hybrid Havoc. You say that like I'm joking, but like you look at me like I'm joking, but I'm telling you, time travel, man. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> What, Dave Filoni's like fuck it Ahsoka's in everything I'm like look as a big Ahsoka fan stop <laughs> like just chill I don't know who does he have the bigger crush on now Saw Gerrera or Ahsoka who Dave Filoni yeah he's putting the Saw Gerrera in everything I mean he's he's not in charge of the show like that uh, I think the showrunner is the uh, Jennifer called it he's a creator of the show but he's over on there doing the Mandalorian so he doesn't, have, he doesn't have his hand in his pie as much as he does mm. uh, the other animated shows, no. Uh, yeah, so then we get back to, they, they obviously go in, they get the information they think they need, they try to escape, and then um, shit gets absolutely fucked with that rail car scene. It's sort of the perfect way that you love to see action thriller movies do this, where they do the really cool thing of building up the scene going in. You know, so the first time they fly in, Omega's like, holy shit, that's a long way down. This is really scary. They have like a slow, nice, relaxing way across into the facility. And then when they come back, you're already prepared. Your mind knows, holy shit, Omega was already scared the first time. Look how high this is. This is this is this this shit's fucked. And now they're like yep. shooting and hanging and yeah, it does very well put together, I feel, on both ends of that that episode to set everything up. And then yeah, ending yep. that ending the episode with the the, stuck. The, the, they're stuck and then opening the, the following episode with tech dying I'm like alright I mean I knew when he I thought when he was going to start the thing it was going to be like a ski lift and the the other one would just start moving without him I'm like what are you going to do mm. today no I mean That's they could they could, winter, they could winter soldier him I guess yeah I mean potentially make him Russian yeah, why not? The, I mean, we've already got a bad batch, remember, with a metal arm, but... Uh, Star Wars Episode Ten. They unthaw him. He's one of the main characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ray and... Put a, pull Ray him out of the ice. Yeah. Ray and Tech. It's the, that's the main cast now. Ray and Tech. Why not? Uh, in that second episode, it sort of flies by because obviously you, you have the, the height of the action of the first episode, and then um, they have the little downtime when Sid finally fucks them over. And I say finally, like I wanted. Why did they go to Sid? That's my <laughs> question. Of everybody, you could have gone anywhere. You know, she was just tired. You know, she'd been knocked about. That she didn't really need to go see Sid. You know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, was there? That was. <sighs> I'd love to know the distance to get to Sid or old mate that you just came from. Probably. Oh, that was the other precursor. Like uh, Hunter's talking to to Omega is like, listen, we're thinking we go up with soldier life. Uh, we're going to live a life on Pabu or whatever. Live a life on Pabu if you want to. Yeah, if you want to. And she says yes. Yes. So, of course, everything goes to yeah. shit. And as soon as she says yes, that sounds great. Cut to Wrecker getting captured. <laughs> like. <laughs> Typical. Of course. Yeah, but uh, Sid's a piece of shit. I hope they die next season. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> I mean, they look like they felt bad. Nah. Guilty conscience doesn't mean they feel bad. It just means they go guilty conscious. you know? Guilty conscience doesn't mean you're actually wanting, re- wanting or deserving of redemption. Wow. Sucker fuck, Sid. Uh, so <laughs> then we, yeah, so the Hunter tries to send Omega out. Omega's like, now I've already lost too many people. She sort of hangs around, tries to fight, gets captured, of course. But then I just love the fact that, um, fuck, into blanking on the character's name. Old mate jumps in the, the Echo. Adder. Echo, yeah. My favorite line, though, is when the, that act comes up, A-T-T-T, however you want to say it. He doesn't matter. It doesn't care. I had this fucking... This... Uh, comes around doesn't and, matter in cells. Does not. When it comes around the corners, just like shooting shit, and the fact that Wrecker and Hunter are like, 
must be Echo. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just like a funny little bit. Um, yeah, uh, Omega gets captured. They they don't get to her in time. They don't know where she's going. They have no idea how to find out where she's going. And then you get the very sort of cliff, cliffhanger line of just Hunter saying, we will not stop until we can, you know, like gives this whole little we find pep speech. We will not stop. We'll tear the planet apart. Very find particular her, so. set of skills. Yeah, literally. Sort of that, that sort of, that sort of moment. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Mega then turns up. They, they've gone to Dr. Frankenstein's little planet there. Yeah. They explain that the the reason she's been brought there is sort of as a, hey, uh, Nala C, if you don't work, we're going to hurt Omega because we know you have an attachment to Omega. Yep. Omega he- heads into the uh, whatever experiment room. She spots Crosshair, who's, I don't know, knocked the fuck out on a chair or whatever. But then we're left with the mega cliffhanger at the end of the episode where a one of the female engineers who has, I believe, been spotted in the background at least every other well, episode. Well, she was the one who interrogated or, like, was talking to uh, Cross, Crosshair. Crosshair, originally, week. yeah. So she's been so, in, in the episodes. Uh, but she she's says... Been, yeah, she's been kind of featured prominently, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have a name, just simply female engineer. Or something like that in the credits. Um, she says, "Hey, I thought you'd recognize me because we're sisters." And she sort of takes off her little visor thing, and you can see that she has a resemblance to a mega. So this is potentially huge um, ramification-wise for what's going on here. So try and pull apart this thread a bit because a mega, from what we understand, is a clone. Of Django Fat, but mm-hmm. they made um, female, right? Is I guess mm-hmm. the 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 way that went. Now you've got an introduction of this other character, an older one of an, an older Omega, for the sake of this, who is yep. this engineer. So then the question is, okay, is Meg a Mega the original? Well, she's a Mega, so she surely is, because you know Alpha Omega. That's the the whole thing we've got going on between her and Boba Fett. So then is this a, what did they create one of a clone? If so, why it, is she not that, you know, like, I was just like, what's the, what'd you make of this reveal then? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, uh, it just goes to show, I guess Omega wasn't the original, I guess. Uh, it makes sense in the, in that, you know, they've been experimenting with, altering the cloning process i guess uh that or have previously been working on trying to create different types of bodies from the same genetic material i don't know yeah it's interesting uh also interesting she's voiced by uh keisha castle hughes who people who you know people would might know from you know she was a little girl in whale rider she was nominated uh but also, she played Queen Apollana of Naboo in Revenge of the Sith. So maybe she's a, a, a clone of that queen, you know? We don't know. No. I refuse. There's a chance. No. I refuse. We are heavy into the clone stuff, though, within this show. Do you, do you think we reach a stage where the, the whole... I mean, we're sort of already at that stage, to be honest. Once they did the whole Palpatine's a clone... We've, we've gone down a rabbit hole, but do you think we just reach a stage where the, the clone stuff becomes think, yeah. too much? I think so. There's just so much of it at the moment, especially with obviously them touching on it in uh, Mandal- the Mandalorian at the moment as well, um, or like hinting at it several times, like with some of the facilities they've come across in different episodes and that kind of stuff. I mean, they're even uh, hinting at it in the next Jedi game. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, you know, cloning, it's it's huge. huge big now. deal. Big deal, yeah. You know, huge. Just the, goes to the show the prequels are very important, so. Fucking George Lucas, you know what I mean? Fucking George Lucas. Maybe Attack of the Clones is the most important episode, film. You could argue, I think. For the future of the- For the future of the franchise, Attack of the Clones is the movie that fucks everything up. <laughs> <laughs> Without Attack of the Clones, we don't get We don't get Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, we don't get Rise of Skywalker. 
What a pain if we don't get Palpatine, suddenly appears. Yeah, Palpatine as a match to survive. Uh yeah. Anything else from the two part of the main bits I haven't hit on? No, I mean, yeah, just uh, just, uh it was heartbreaking seeing Omega deal with tech, like constantly screaming, "We have to go back!" and then mm. you know, old Frankenstein or locksmith, I think Royce Lock or something. I don't uh, care. It's pulling out the goggles. Yeah, that's dark. See, the, the, there's a chance, you know, that maybe he, he he's definitely been down he's, there. He's had a look. Yeah, he's been down there. He's had a look at the body. Mm. Yeah. He said there wasn't enough left to save, but that's just what he said. But maybe he clones the clone. We don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he tech clones a clone. <laughs> tech two. Tech two boogaloo. Uh yeah, we shall see. We shall see. And that whole the yeah, the row the the Railcar sequence was fantastic. Yeah, the Railcar sequence was absolutely like fantastic. even just the the they're almost falling off the track. Mm. Uh obviously setting it up for, you know, tech sacrifice, I think yeah. Yeah. Just no, the def- threat definitely, of the definitely a freaking, highlight, I think. The threat of the the TIE Fighter no, not TIE Fighters, the well, the, the Empire ships coming in. Yeah. Fucking terrifying. Yeah. Uh, Hunter them. hearing them from like really far away. <laughs> Even Something. before he can see them, yeah. Oh, his senses, yeah. Yeah. No, that was it. So how do you yeah, overall, like how do you feel about the the second season now that we've sort of had this whole up down, up down I mean, re- it ended on a really high, but yeah, how do you feel about the whole Yeah, I season? mean it I think it was definitely a season of hopefully a season of like planting a bunch of seeds that will be paid off next season. Mm. Assuming it gets announced, which we suspect it will be in the next yeah. probably a Star Wars celebration. Yeah. Well, we know for animation, like by the time this show's done airing, they're, they're, they've already probably recorded, if they're doing season three, which they probably are, they've already recorded all of it, you know, just the, the way the way production on animation works is, you know, they're, mm. they're not waiting to announce it now and start making it now. They have to, they have to make, yeah. start, they have to, animation takes longer, so they have to just start doing it ahead of time. Um, Yeah, I, it's just, I really liked the first season and I, and I gave it that sort of first season pass for some of it because i know all mm. these shows are sort of you know rebels clone wars they will have sort of first season woes second season woes to a degree and third season is usually when things start to get really good but yeah i just yeah. felt like this is a very uneven season where there was just a lot of unfocused attention on random adventures and episodes that didn't feel like they offered much in the way of either character development or even interesting monster of the week esque storylines which was sort of the it didn't do either which was the the most disappointing thing i feel but yeah i mean there was some really good stuff throughout the season um of course the i think the season finale was the the, the highlight of it all a little but yeah coming into a season three with the characters all sort of split up and yeah lots of really interesting stuff being implemented throughout this season that we can we can pick up with and go with coming into that third season that that that's yeah the next season definitely has the potential to be a really good really good story to tell i think of the way things are left yeah so we shall see though all right thank you for joining us on this run of the very bad batch of course subscribe to holocron entries for all our other great star wars content including currently airing at the moment you will find the mandalorians where me and ash are talking about each and every episode of the mandalorian that's still airing on disney plus we're talking about star wars still a few more weeks of that show left follow our twitters over at explosion.com slash twitter join our discord explosion.com slash discord uh we will be back i mean even after the mandalorian for at least another one or two specials to discuss uh uh what the fuck's the show called uh the star wars animated like one special whatever they're called visions visions we'll do at least an episode or two no, 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 visions. um yeah that's it star wars visions is it yeah star wars visions now, as soon as you said it, i was like yeah that's it star wars visions okay yeah so it's second season star wars oh visions. that was the 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 one they did with like doku and stuff no nah. what was that called <laughs> tales from galaxy i think yeah something maybe. like that Star Wars Visions, uh, that's back on May the 4th. All episodes will drop at once, like last time, I believe. So we will do, I think we did two episodes last time. I 
probably do the same yep. thing this time, split them up into four each. So, we, yeah. So at least a few more weeks of us on this feed talking Star Wars. And then you've got, of course, uh, Star Wars Celebration coming up at the end of the month as well. So yeah, should have some trailers and stuff to talk about from that as well uh yeah as, as soon enough as well and then the next show after all of this that should be excited about would hopefully be um, well it's either skeleton crew or the alkaline yeah i reckon skeleton crew hopefully well Just i mean i'm sorry I, i'm keen for you though, to be <laughs> honest but i think i don't know I, I i would say skeleton crew first we'll we'll, we'll see how we go all right wait are we talking about the jedi little kid one we're going to do episode by episode breakdowns of that no, but I'm going to watch that. I watched the YouTube <laughs> video they put out, like the introducing the characters. I was like, this yes. looks like if if I had, if I was a little kid, I would love the shit. This just some cute little new characters. They try and jump around. They, you know, they they nearly have a pole, a uh, totem falling on them. Then Yoda comes out. He's like, mm, you nearly squash yourselves, you did. And then like saves them. Yeah, pretty good shit. So. Uh, if you like this episode, head on over to explosion.com slash support to donate as little as dollar to help out the show. Or, you, uh, you know, support the website explosionhub.com it's where everything else happens you can you can do that we love you thank you very much and until next season dylan tech this week it was free free falling i feel a little bad about it you should feel fucking terrible to be honest but (laughs) think about a mega